blending something. Yeah. Maybe you can start by telling the viewers what you are blending. Yeah, today we are blending garlic and ginger. Mm -hmm. It's called garlic paste. Mm -hmm. It has oil. Mm -hmm. We are now working on our salad. Don't miss out this Saturday on What's in Your Kitchen. On KBC Channel One, we are a TV station like no other. Ah. Get a taste of the best in entertainment. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Feel the passion. Will you promise me? I swear that you will never lose me. I can't get married to you. I'm sure you know about it. That's why you are making fun of me. Experience the drama. Get out. Who is the man in this one? Ah, no. And the laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Move to the beat. We are live from Broadcasting House and get informed on the latest happenings. KBC Channel One. We are the full package. Oh, yes. And Kenya's watching. Thank you very much for joining us. You mean you are sad because uh, uh, your wife to be had blocked you? development apenda spende mm. aya ya ya bwana mmo unaonekana atunalia mbele ya bwana wake tunakufunga kwa muti tunakokwaka vipoko mpaka choi wake asubuhi if you think the girlfriend has had broken you then how do you better pesa alafu pesa ikakataka kupenda back my brother what are you even speaking about now Well, it is exactly at the top of the hour. Welcome to KBC's uh, Lunchtime News. We do have in store for you a lot in terms of the doctor's strike that has entered its 22nd day. Our reporter Nancy Okwari is following on that particular beat and we have other parliamentary session, including the amb ambassadorial rules that are currently being vetted before the National Defense Departmental Committee of the National Assembly, as well as the Committee of Agriculture that is set to address members of the fourth estate in regards to the recent wake of the fake fertilizer. We do have that and so much more for the next one hour. So welcome to the broadcast. My name is Abdiaziz Ashim. My co-anchor for this afternoon is Brian Muraru. And let's start getting an update on the health sector where a family in Homa Bay County is appealing for financial assistance to help them treat their daughter who is ailing from a heart condition. Now, due to the ongoing doctor's strike, the family of Josephine Atieno, a Form 2 student of St. Ambrose Secondary School, has been forced to seek cardiology services at the Jaramo Gyoginga Odinga Teaching and Referral Hospital in Kisumu, but the family says they have no money to seek further treatment. I'm being told this story will be coming in shortly. This is regards to the status of the update of the doctor's strike that I told you initially that our reporter, that is Nancy Okwari, is following on that particular bit. Now let's head over to some unfortunate news where a container that is suspected to have alcoholic content is being held at the Rwai police station 
Station. This is after causing an accident at Benedicta area along the eastern bypass in the accident. A mother and her two children escaped a death narrowly after the container smashed their saloon car. Now the area residents who are concerned about the alcoholic odor that was coming from the container which was leaking. According to the Ruai OCPD, Patricia Yegon, investigations are ongoing to establish the contents of the container. Area residents have also lamented a rise in accidents at Utawala along the busy eastern bypass. Diversions were not strategically put. Ukiangalia vizuri venyeo gari ilikuwa imeka Weo dereva alijaribu Alijaribu kabisa Kama hange, hange kata vile alikata Naona yo gari ingegongana Hata isaizi ingekuwa story ingine Mimi si mtu wa vileo lakini Kulingana na venye nasikia Iyo harufu ni pombe Kwa harufu nasikia ni pombe but si wezi toa ile ushunda ya komba ni pombe Jua ija funguliwa lakini kusikia nasikia ikinuka Na katika kona hii tumekuwa tukilalamika kwa maana hii barabara design haiko sawa ina lack ile deceleration lane wakati una slow down ili kupiga u turn hauna nafasi ya kuwa umeondoka katika highway main trunk ukue kando na pia ukisha join hakuna mahali ambapo utaweza ku accelerate una join mara moja Now let's get an update of the doctor's strike. I want to take you live where we do understand the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union are currently addressing members of the fourth estate. Let's get to the update. Vile koti meamuru jana, wiki mbili pieke tuweze kusikizana. Leo ni sikuwa kwanza, tangu jana, hatu jaitu wa kokote, hatu jasikizana. Tuko tayari kuongea kwa mazungumzo, tutatua haya mamboyoti. Iwe ni a national, iwe ni a county, Iwe ni ya level 6 hospitals. Sote lazima tukue tunasikizana. Hakuna daktari wa county, daktari wa national, wa kenyata, wa wapi, wa county ambaye anafaa kukandamizo kukote. Sisi wote ni daktari sawa, kama polisi, kama judge, kama yeyote yule anafaa kazi kazi kwa public sector. Sisi wote lazima tukue na hiyo dhuluma iliondolewe, kwa sababu daktari ya menyanyasika sana kwa meka nyingi. Ndiyo mana ma daktari wote, Mwaka wa 2017, tukafanya CBA. Tukasikizana vizuri na sirikali. Na tukamaliza na tukasema tumesahawe ayo yote. Tuweze kuendelea na kusonga mbele. Lakini leo hii, sirikali mpe imekuja, imesema imesahawe. Na haikumbuki kama tulenda mgomo kutatua mambo haya. So hatuta shinda tukifungua vitabu, kukumbushana, tulikubaliana hivi. Vili tuliafikiana, tufanya. Na tunangoja kuendelea mbele kufanya huduma ya afya, iweze kuendelea vile inavyo stahili. So serikali inakosea sana wa Kenya, inakosea sana madaktari kwa kutozingatia while deliberations are still ongoing at the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union as well as other unions who are currently addressing members of the fourth estate regarding the status update of the doctor's strike that has entered the 22nd day with some even Kupo entering the third day and lab technicians also joined in the strike. This is an issue that is ongoing. We'll be keeping tabs. Our reporter Nancy Okwari is on the ground and will be briefing us later in our subsequent bulletins. Now let's come back here to the studio brief you more on what is happening in other parts of the country. Where the government has shut down mining sites in Migori County after six people were hospitalized from consuming contaminated water. It is alleged that the spring water had been contaminated with a poisonous chemical known as cyanidin from one of the mining plants. Speaking at the seed mining processing plant in Derma village, Nyatike sub-county, Deputy County Commissioner Daniel Mkoko gave a stern warning to the players, noting that such negligence will not be tolerated. He further ordered the closure of mining plants operating without valid mining licenses. These mining activities have posed great danger to the people of Nyatike. We are closing all these illegal mining operations till they meet the requirements set as by the Mining Act. This even as he noted that investigation was underway and once concluded, the culprits will be brought to book. Noted an upsurge of mining 
operations and activities that have no legal authorizations whatsoever. This is a contravention of the Mining Act 2016. But who wants in first place read the Mining Act and the frameworks, the regulations that were developed, say so that you are not caught in an awkward situation like today where we are closing this premise. Or Picho Chemtai for lunchtime needs. Now on to cross over live to Parliament buildings where I do understand a host of legislators led by the Nairobi Senator, that is Edwin Sifuna, and members of the Agricultural Committee are currently addressing members of the Fourth Estate. Let's listen in. They had not been certified by KEBS. Um, the MD father told the committee that the Bury had um, received complaints that there, were, uh, there was fake fertilizers being sold by NCBP. Uh, but when they first went to the NCPP to pick samples of the said fertilizer, they were denied entry and asked to make uh, a request for the samples through official correspondence. According to KEPS, um, when the samples were officially were finally picked, uh, uh, tests showed that the fertilizer was uh, not organic as alleged by the manufacturers. The committee has since invited CS, uh, PS, MD KFIS, uh, uh, MD NCPP uh, for a second meeting to discuss uh, on the fertilizer subsidy program on Monday 8th, April 2024. And the committee is also set to meet SBL Innovate uh, Manufacturers uh, Limited, uh, the manufacturers of the G GPC Organic uh, Plus uh, uh, fertilizer on Tuesday 9th April 2024. The committee members are further scheduled to conduct field visits uh, or, or rather visit uh, to various NCBB stores uh, depots across the country where they will um, also engage with farmers on the availability, fairness in the distribution, the price and the quality of fertilizer sold to them from the respective NCBB depots. After the scheduled meeting and, and field visit, the committee will prepare a report uh, on its findings for consider, uh, consideration by the House. Um, it is important uh, for members of the public to note that the committee does not take this matter lightly, especially given its potential impact on the government's plan towards making the country food secure. Uh, the agriculture sector plays a key role in the economic growth of our country and we therefore cannot allow fraudulent practices to mess with it. We wish to assure the country that we shall do everything within our mandate to ensure that corrective measures are put in place and that punishment is meted out on anyone found culpable uh, of any malpractice. Thank you. Uh, members of the fourth estate, uh, that is the, that is the, our, our briefing by the Departmental Committee on Agriculture. Like to... Well, that's a briefing from the members of the Agricultural Committee of the National Assembly. I do understand some of the senators are also present at that briefing. It's in regards to the recent fake fertilizer probe that is ongoing. The committee has clearly stated they are inviting the CS of Agriculture, his PS, KEBS, as well as NCPB and other relevant bodies to tackle this particular issue. And they're set to appear before that committee on the 8th and 9th of next week, which is April 2024. And of course, they'll prepare a report that they will table before for the House for its consideration in regards to this particular matter. Now, I want to take you back to our initial story that we opened up uh, when we started our coverage this afternoon, where a family in Homerby County is appealing for financial assistance to help treat their daughter who is ailing from a heart condition. Now, due to the ongoing doctor strike, the family of Josephine Atieno, a Form 2 student of St. Ambrose Secondary School, has been forced to seek cardiology services at the Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga Teaching and Referral Hospital. But in Kisumu, the family says they have no money to seek further treatment. Josephine Atieno, a Form 2 student at St. Ambrose Secondary School, is in pain and doctors here at Homer Bay County Teaching and Referral Hospital say she could be ailing from a heart condition. 
Currently, we are not able to offer the services, so we usually refer patients to Meditrina for the service, but the patients are not financially stable. We have, tr we have tried to stabilize the patient, but we can't give the support that the patient needs. But with the ongoing doctor's industrial action, she has been referred to Jaramogi Oginga Odinga in Kisumu County or Kenyatta Referral Hospital in Nairobi for further treatment. This comes as the doctor's strike hits day 22nd with doctors vowing to stay put, accusing the government of insincerity in ending the strike. Their strike has uh, severely affected us because uh, uh, services are not optimal in nature. Uh, and we operate as a county on the best service possible to all our clients. So any slight hitch affects us a great deal. But due to the financial difficulties, the family is unable to seek referral services and are appealing for financial assistance from the government and well wishes. Sample sapo inafaa pimwe na kupima hadi wa leo. Wali tuambia leo inafaa wa pimwe ikifika zubuyi, daktari alisema. Sasa hiyo haitafanyika. Tutapewa transfer. Sasa naomba, sina cha kitu, sina pesa. Pesa mbae nilikuwa nae, nilimalesha yote kwa hapa. To be able to help Josephine, you can channel your contribution to M-Pesa number 0704206525 and the name is Millicent Akinyi. And now to the coastal region where a family in Malindi is appealing for help for a decent send-off of their kins who died in the Shakahola killings. Now the family, which was a whistleblower in the Shakahola massacre leading to the arrest of controversial preacher, that is Paul McKenzie, says it is unable to lay its four family members to rest over financial constraints following the release of the bodies late March this year. Days after bodies of persons who died in Shakahola were released, after conclusion of DNA tests, a family who raised their alarm over the killings is seeking help <laughs> to conduct a decent burial for four family members who are among the victims. Tungeomba labda ile ahadi ambayo sirikali ilisema, basi itufikie mapema ili kusudi labda kufikia kesho tu tunaweza kumaliza pale pale pobaki hata sahi mahali hapa tulipo hatuna hata viandarua maana sahi weather ni mbaya kuna mvua yani all in all kusema tu familia hii inaomba msaada mkubwa sana ili kufanikisha mazishi haya with calls for well wishers to chip in a single grave with four chambers have been dug to reduce the cost as they have not received any help from the government as promised. Sirikali kituweseshia hapo, basi takuwa pia tuweza kuchachia miambele kwa tumepata ngufu. The family belonging to the GSU officer who quit his job to join the cult together with his wife and children says it lost eight members with four slated for burial on Friday. With only four out of eight family members discovered, the family wants the government to help them find and bury the remaining four said to have suffered a similar fate in Shakahola. Bado tunatarajia tupewe watu wengine either wakiwa hai ama wakiwa wamekufa kwa sababu watu sikusema walikufa na hawajapatikana mochari. Kwa hivyo labda wakipatikana hai sawa wakipatikana wakufa pia kama hivi. Pia takuwa majonzi ya taisha maana kitoka bado tuko hali ya majonzi vile vile. For lunchtime news I'm Gladys Mungai. Now let's head over to Kajado County where we do understand the Minister for Tourism, that is Alfred Mutua, is currently seeing sightseeing in Kajado County, but I do understand the Cabinet Secretary is currently addressing. Let's listen in to what the CS is saying. Kama nakuja kwa mama zetu, ama anatimbia kwa park, wawe na sehemu ambazo ni za stare, weko samamba kabisa. Na tukakubaliana ya kwamba, mutalia kija park na kitaka kujisaidia. Hakuna haja ende kusumbuana na ndovu wa kisiwe songa kidogo ni jisaidi hapa. Sindio? Tumjengie cho yake. Na tukakubaliana ya kwamba serikali ya William Ruto 
ikipitia ofisi yangu itajenga rest areas cho mahali kuna duka mahali mzuri watu wanaweza keti vizuri wa kupumzika tunajenga tano katika Kajiado County na na governor akasema atajenga kumi katika Kajiado County ikianza sehemu tofauti katika eneo la county ndio watalii wakikuja wasiende na upesi si ndio wakaekae tukakubali ya kwamba pia kuna vitu vingi katika county hii ya Kajiado kuna sehemu nyingi kuna magadi kuna pande ya namanga kuna milima kuna sehemu nyingi sana tukaunda komitii inayo itakuwa inaongozwa na na ofisa wawili sekretari wa wadla, wa tourism anaitwa dr Mbucha pamoja na CC wapi CC wa tourism yuko hapa na within one month wanatupatia report ndio tuweze kufanya marketing the idea ni kwamba tunataka mtalii akiwa Berlin akiwa Sydney akiwa Sao Paulo akiwa Los Angeles ana book ticket yake kuja Nairobi lakini anakuja kulala Kajiado County. Si ndio straight to Kajiado County anaacha pesa hapa. Pia tukaongea kuhusu mambo muhimu sana kuhusu barabara za maeneo haya. Maeneo haya ambayo seli najua barabara imeharibika sana, mimi nikasema ya kwamba kufikia wiki mbili ambazo zinakuja mtaona mabadiliko. Ndatuma watu wangu wakuje hapa waanze kutengeneza barabara kuna tenda ambayo tunangojea hivyo kabisa ndio watu wapate hiyo contract ndio wakuje waweze kuendelea kufanya hayo mambo Mheshimiwa governor amelete mambo ya kusema ya kwamba pia kuna kuna mambo ya ushanga kule hata kule kwa conservancies na kuweza kuwasaidia kuuza na kuwa na mambo ambayo yanasaidia utamaduni wenu ndio mtu akija hapa asikuje tu kukaa na kuona mnyama na kwenda hapana tunampeleka mali anaona dance za kimasai miziki ya kimasai chakula ya masai si ndio ya watu wa Kajiado hata makabila mengine ya Kajiado wanajienjoy na hapo tukasikizana ya kwamba kuna center cultural center ambayo iko funded na endelea kupata funding inaitwa Nongotiak Nongotiak kwa hapa watu Nongotiak Nongotiak eh Nongotiak cultural center sisi tutaingilia hiyo tuweze kuisukuma tuangalie design ikuwe ni kitu ya kifahari ambayo inaonekana nzuri akiona kutoka katika eneo yote ya ngambo tumekubaliana ya kwamba conservancies na meyasante sana kwa kutupatia hiyo hiyo acres ambayo umetupatia mzee ya kufanya hii kazi hii tumesema asante sana na sisi tutawasaidia kuwatafutia wawekezaji wajenge mahoteli akija hapa kuna kulala maingilia analala hapa si ndio anaacha pesa wapi kazi yenu ni kumkamua pesa akitaka kusoma kidogo mnamuuzia kitu akaakaa mnamuonyesha sinema kidogo Well, that is the cabinet secretary for tourism, Alfred Mutua, addressing congregants in Kajiado County, giving us a status update of tourism within that particular devolved unit where he has addressed on resolving human-wildlife conflict as well as boosting tourism within those parks so as to boost the sector itself and, of course, ensure that the lives of those people and communities living around those parks uh, are amply compensated and, of course, promoting local tourism given that this is the peak season for national tourists uh, to arrive in into the country as well as local tourists were touring the various parks within our great country. Let's come back here to the studio and we have some good news for the corporation itself where the National Counterterrorism Center, the NCTC, in partnership with Iftin FM 101.9 FM station, an affiliate of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation in Somali language, has donated foodstuffs to intellectually challenged children in Garissa with special school. Now, the donation was part of the National Counterterrorism Center and Iftin FM KBC radio station's gesture of giving back to the society. Wednesday morning, the National Counterterrorism Center NCTC, in partnership with Iftin FM radio station, an affiliate of Kenya Broadcasting Corporation that broadcasts in Somalia language, donated an assortment of foodstuffs to intellectually challenge children in Garissa Special School. According to the director of National Counterterrorism Center, Dr. Rosalind Nyawira, the idea of giving back to the society is in line with the ideals of the holy month of Ramadan. 
KBC's 15 FM head of the station Kasim Adan and brand manager Alex Karega said the donation was part of the station's corporate social responsibility. 15 FM has been engaged in corporate social responsibilities for the last 10 years since 2015. And uh, today we brought uh, food items, dry food, and also uh, uh, in terms of flour, rice, uh, we brought beans, we brought even biscuits and milk for the children. The, we want to thank the National Counter Terrorism Center for partnership because they are the one who have solely sponsored this uh, uh, event. Um, to give a Ramadan donation, giving back to the society, we thank God again it's a very good season where we're able now to express and reach out to the needy. So as KBC, as Iftin FM, this is our heartbeat. Whenever we get a chance, we want to give back. Garissa Special School Head Teacher Mohamed Abdi Hamed urged other organizations to emulate KBC in helping the less fortunate in the society. They have done donation to our institution, they have given food to our learners, they have improved their nutritional nutrient and we are very helpful that at least this is going to continue. They did similarly last year, they are doing it again this year and they are promising even to go beyond that. The NCTC and Iftin FM have pledged to use KBC Iftin FM to create more awareness and peace building. And in other news, parents in Busia County have been urged to help hone and expose talents of children living with disability and saying it is a way to ensure they feel included in the society. Now, speaking at the opening of the Kenya National Special School Games and Sports in Western Region, Amukuro West, a ward member of County Assembly, Boniface Rute, called on parents to give children living with disabilities the same opportunities as their children, saying their talents can help them contribute to the growth of the country's economy. Mwabwa inagani, kuna kitu ambao kinezafanya. So nitaomba wale wazazu wote ambao kuna watoto ambao kuna ule mwabwa ina yoyote, waweze kujitokeza, tujue wale watoto, tuwapeleke katika shule ambazo nyeza kuwasaidia. Waweze kutuwa wale watoto inje, waweze kuwapeleke mahali ambapo serikali imeeka mikakati na miindu msingi ya kuona kwamba watoto wanasaidika na pia kuona kwamba zile talanta ambao ukonazo waweze kupanya nikuwa ya maida. Elsewhere, residents of Nyakoe Ward in Kisi County are raising an alarm over alleged grabbing of a public land by a private developer within the area. They claim their land is an access road to the office of the area member of the county assembly and are now questioning how the developer obtained a title deed on the land in question. Tango miyaka yu yote nienda rudi, yu chama mifunga njia, MC yetu wa mahali ya nakaa, atukoni mahali ya anafanya kazi, milangu inafungwa, hata macho hile tunachenga nafunja yu mutu. Sasa atuchu hiko na muna gani? Kazi, kazi menikalia ngumu sababu kwa aksesi ya ofisi yangu ni ngumu, sababu hakuna barabara. Enapiti nipite kwenye maindi, maindi ndiyo nifike kwa, kwa ofisi. Nyumba ya serikali ambayo MC ya anafanya kazi yake, afanyi kazi yake. Ndiyo wanainji waliamua wakaona waja tuanze tu hivi ili tusikiswe maoni yetu wa visi yetu ifanyi kazi vizuri na... Now elsewhere, more than 100 elderly people and those living with disability from Ruiru Rawea area in Meru County have benefited from foodstuff donations from well wishes across the devolved unit. Now the donated foodstuff included rice, maize flour, vegetables among others. Now according to the well wisher, the donation came in handy in the area is generally dry and receives minimal rainfall making it hard for the residents to have a bumper harvest this even as she called on more well wishes to come on board and assist the group
some of them hawana watoto hawana maybe grandchildren wakuja kuangalia some of them they struggle maybe they don't have any strength hawezi kwenda nje kujitafutia so i find it good to come and help them kuwa support kuwaletea vyakula kuwasaidia in every little way that i can hatujawahi ona mambo mengine kama hii katika area hii ya Roire tumeshukuru Mungu sana huu kijana mchichana amejitorea sana 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 kuja kusaidia watu hawa wakongwe wengine wako na magonjwa ya kansa wameremewa wengine wako hata wamesindwa hata kukuja tumetoa shukrani sana tumesema asante asante tumesema kwa chakula ni asante sana kwake ndio asante Twenty seven minutes have passed the hour that takes us to a first commercial break on KBC's lunchtime news. Don't go too far, we still have more for you on the other side of the break. The FKH Premier League season continues to bring you the best of the best in the Kenyan local football scene this weekend. Don't miss a single moment of the action live on KBC Channel 1, the true sports partner. Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is Kenya's most trusted news and entertainment brand. Grow your business, acquire more clients, and reach new, diverse audiences by advertising with us. We connect brands to audiences that matter, driving results for brands and enhancing your current marketing strategies. We have packages for all needs, and no product is too small for us. Contact us today and capitalize on our combined power of radio, TV, and digital platforms. KBC Connecting Kenyans. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now let's get down to business and we start over in Kajado County where the Kajado County government has rolled out a livestock vaccination program targeting to administer 100,000 doses against foot and mouth disease, 95,000 doses against a blue tongue disease and 800 doses against rabies. Here is Frederick Moki with the details. In a bid to counter the spread of livestock diseases transmitted through cross border livestock trade, Kajado County has embarked on a vaccination campaign against the foot and mouth disease, blue tongue disease, and rabies. Kajado Governor Joseph Oleninku is opening to herders to avail the livestock for the vaccination that is being administered this month across the county. <laughs> na tunashukuru washikadau wenzetu wa um, eh, Felkunga Hilfe ambayo pia wametushika mkono katika safari hii. Tunahimiza wafugaji wetu wakati kaunti inasunguka katika kila pembe ya kaunti yetu. Napo itishwa kuleta mifugo yenu tafadhali muhakikishe kwamba mumetimiza na maagizo hayo. Herders are optimistic the vaccination will avert animals death during the rainy season. Tumejaribu kusunguka ma chemistry tukakosa hii dawa. Kwa hivyo kwa leo tunashukuru eh kansola wa area hii na gavana wa area hii. Tuangalia kwa maendeleo yetu yote hatuna resource nyingine. Ni tunaangalia tu ngombe lakini Mungu lakini leo Frederick Muki for lunchtime news. 
Moki, thank you for that report. Elsewhere, Trade Africa is investing 262 million shillings to ease grain movement within the East African region. East Africa Grain Council Executive Director David Masila says some of the cash will fund standardization of aflatoxin policies. The EAGC is also lobbying for the harmonization of CES levied on food transporters in the country. Business Council intra EAC analysis showed that the value of trade among EAC member states reduced to 33% to 472 billion shillings in 2022 compared to the previous year. The drop was occasioned by a decrease in serial trade which fell to 37.3 billion shillings in the period under review. So there you have it. To support the regional grain trade, Trademark Africa and East African Grain Council will roll out a three-year, 262 million shillings project in a bid to streamline cross-border grain trade. Part of the funds will be used to standardize aflatoxin policies in the region and grant paperwork to ease the movement of key cereals in the region. The, the big challenge is aflatoxin, and so how can we make uh, trade in grains and staples more safe, uh, and working both with the government and the private sector to help them comply with the standards that are required so that uh, people can consume safe, safe uh, food, basically. To protect member states' foreign exchange reserves, Trademark is seeking to prop up the use of local currency in the regional grain trade. The EAGC is also lobbying for harmonization of sales levied on food transporters in Kenya and a number of countries in the EAC block in a bid to lower grain prices. So on average, we are seeing uh, maize coming into the market in Nairobi, picking up to six or 700 shillings a bag in form of cess. And it's just a cost that is unacceptable and that we have uh, appealed to government to harmonize all this process at the national level. East African community member states have been advised to observe the common market protocol to increase intra-trade. Beson Ruba reporting for Lunchtime News. Elsewhere, plans are underway to use the local cooperative movement network to position Kenya as the leading superfood producer and exporter. Now, Cooperatives Cabinet Secretary Simon Chiliguis believes that focusing on sustainable agricultural value chain reforms harnessing and the talent, uh, the latent power of cooperative societies and MSMEs will help Kenya tap on the 22.6 trillion shillings global superfood market. Superfoods continue to gain popularity as consumers strive to enrich their dietary diversity. The global superfoods market reached $171.8 billion in 2023, which is about 22.6 trillion Kenyan shillings. Kenya believes leveraging the cooperatives movement would help the country secure a slice of the global superfoods market. We are now the sixth, the, the fifth largest exporter of avocado in the world, led by Mexico. We could easily be a world leader if we organized our farmers through cooperatives and also organize and provide them extension and support services in terms of picking, packing, and uh, classifying, and even packaging and delivery of that fruit. Telugui says Kenya will adopt a public-private partnership with leading growers to provide technical capacity building for local farmers through the cooperatives movement. So if we can build lessons, learn lessons, train the farmers, we want to work on a partnership with Kakuzi so that we can disseminate the same best practice, the best, the world class. We, put, we are selling Kenyan produce. If we can pass that knowledge to the farmer, then we will have much more impact in the country and we can even have production across the country. Kakuzi says it is seeking to expand its market beyond avocados to commercial blueberry production. There are very exacting global standards for the production of superfoods. And that is where we as Kenyan producers have to obtain to attract the right price in the global markets. And we're looking forward to working in partnership with government to be able to enhance that and extend it further. And its Kakuzi Academy platform, the farm provides extension services to 3,000 farmers. Trevor Ngendo for Lunchtime News.
Now, the digital skills of more than 600 students at Kiricho National Polytechnic have been sharpened courtesy of the Jitume Skills Program. Now, three cohorts have been trained at the institution under the training, which is being supported by ICT Authority, Konza Technopolis Development Authority, and the TVET Authority. Skills program is a government initiative aimed at accelerating the pathway for Kenyans to tap online work opportunities. The program targets to empower one million Kenyans take part in digitally enabled jobs over the next five years. The program has so far benefited more 600 students at Kiricho National Polytechnic. So they are trained on uh, basic digital skills, which is uh, using computer, and then after getting those basic digital skills, they are now uh, onboarded on uh, different platforms where they can be able to bid for jobs. As um, the poly uh, in this region, we pride in uh, being able to facilitate the youth to be able to compete globally for this kind of uh, job placement. Among the beneficiaries is Colin Skipping a Teach, who is an electrical engineering student at Kericho National Polytechnic, who says he has secured online work from companies in the UK and Germany. Upon finishing my, uh, my project, I submit and then the company, the company, which is in UK, approves and then they send money. According to Collins, the companies he works for pays him per task. Edna Murungi, for Lunchtime News. <laughs> Elsewhere, the Ministry of Information, Communication and the Digital Economy is currently launching a digital hub in Westlands, Nairobi County. We do understand that the Cabinet Secretary, that is His Excellency Elid Owalo, is in attendance with our reporter Alan on that particular bit. You can see this he is speaking. Let's listen in. right in the villages where the youth are so that we empower the youth right there in each and every ward we are going to have a digital hub where we are going to train the youth and we are also going to connect them to global tech companies so that they get digital jobs this program has got the potential of empowering our youth by way of digital skills they'll be paid in dollars They'll be resident in the villages, but they'll be working for technological companies in America, in Singapore, in UK, in Germany, in India, just to mention but a few. So it is the single most feasible opportunity or means that we have to sort out the unemployment challenge that we have been witnessing in this country. So I want to urge the youth to take this program very, very, very seriously. As a government, we are determined, working with your members of parliament, to ensure that we have got these digital hubs in each and every ward. The MPs will give us the facilities as national government. We will bring the devices. We will connect the internet. We will bring in the trainers. And we will also connect the youth to global technological companies so that they get digital jobs. And we will do that in a total of 1,450 wards spread evenly all over the country. The other thing we are doing is to ensure that government services are available technologically, virtually, on the e-citizen platform. When we came into government, we only had 350 services on the e-citizen. As we speak, we have managed to digitalize a total of 15,462 services, which are today available virtually on the e-citizen platform. So this is going to be a major paradigm shift because we will no longer have to physically visit government offices to consume government services. It will be between you, your phone, and the government. You consume government services from wherever you are. Kenyans, even those abroad, can access government services from whichever country they are resident in through our e-citizen platform. This is going to be a major game changer. The other challenge that we are addressing is the challenge of affordability of the handsets, the telephones. We are embarked on a partnership with the private sector to manufacture telephones. 
we have started with the local assembly. Already, we have managed through the uh, assembly plan to roll out 194,000 handsets going for smart enabled phones, which are going for about $50 per unit, a drastic reduction in the ordinary cost of the telephone. So we will ensure that as we digitalize government services, we are also facilitating inclusivity by making the handset available. We are taking fiber to all parts of the country. Our target is to roll out fiber to the tune of 100,000 kilometers. And the model that we want to use is to leverage on the existing power lines. As opposed to digging trenches, we are going to leverage on the existing power lines so that we uh, roll out the fiber to each and every part of the country which does not have internet connectivity. The net effect of this is that anywhere where we have got a power line in this country, we are also going to have a fiber line. And if there is electricity connectivity to a household, ultimately we will also be able to connect fiber and internet to each and every household where there is electricity connectivity. That is our objective. We want to revolutionize this country while leveraging on technology. We want to turn Kenya into a digital economy. That is the president's aspiration. We will be able eventually, if we digitalize our services, we facilitate internet connectivity, we make sure that we have got affordable devices, we are able to turn Kenya into a digital economy, and if that is the case, we can operate on 24 hours and turn Kenya into a 24-hour economy, using technology alone as a critical success factor. So let's work together. We will work with all your leaders to ensure that we facilitate internet connectivity, digital skilling for the youth, and ultimately jobs for the youth while leveraging on technology. We will continue monitoring how the youth here, the students here, are utilizing the computers. If there's optimal utilization, when an opportunity arises, we will deploy more computers. <laughs> sawa, sawa. Are you ready, the youth? Muko tayari kufanya kazi? Kutumia computer? Ama mutashindwa? Kufinya tu computer hivi na dola inatoka mutashindwa? Mutashindwa? Kwa hivyo mufanye BD, ajira ndiyo hii, rais alisema kwamba atapanga ajira ya vijana, kazi ndiyo hii sasa kwa computer hapa. Muzishindwe, munafinya tu computer na munapata yu. Well, that is the ICT CS who has just concluded his brief. He is launching a digital hub in Westlands constituency in Nairobi County. What the CS has been able to say is that they will train the youth on the digital hub itself. They are planning to um, approve to this uh, and ensure these digital hubs are placed in 1,450 wards across the country. And he says it will impact the youth with digital skills that will enable them to earn or earn a living from various sites and other job opportunities online. And of course, they will be earning from monetization of the dollar. He has also clearly stated that the government services online have been streamlined. When he came to office, it was 350. Now he's saying it is 15,462 services on the e-citizen platform that you can access it anywhere you are right now in the country. And finally, he has finished on the affordability of the handsets, telephones that we are carrying. He clearly stating that they will be working with the private sector to ensure they make those phones or handsets here locally, targeting 194,000. And of course, that will be charged close to about $50, which is a deduction on the current handsets we do have. That is a function that is ongoing in Westlands constituency in Nairobi County and will be duly informing you in our subsequent uh, bulletins that is our reporter Alan is on that particular bit now let's continue with our business stories where the government has collected 200 million shillings from import levy which was adjusted in June last year now industry principal secretary Juma Mukwana says this that the levy will be used to create industrialization kitty that manufacturers and investors can borrow from to expand their operations something that we can make we're not going to stop you but we'll tax it in such a way that the money we make will help us to 
create our own local industries uh, in, in those kind of sectors. Kama we uko factory na uko na factory Kenya, sio lazima utengeneze bidhaa ya Kenya. Ndio tumepanua soko, unaweza kuwa na factory hapa na una supply katika East African community. Unaweza kuwa na factory hapa na una supply huko Europa ama US, ama hata China, ama India. Vile China inafanya, wanatengeneza biashara, wanatengeneza bidhaa huko China na wanauza ulimwengu wote. Hivyo ndio tunaweza kupata manufaa ya manufacturing. Our thinking is that if we expand the market to MSME, if we make market become more guaranteed, then MSMEs will operate well, their businesses will grow well and will be able to expand the tax base. Elsewhere, the construction of Sebetes Cemetery Factory in West Pokot County is complete with its official opening slated for next week. Now, Devki Group, that company's chairman, Dr. Narendra Raval, says the new factory has created 2,000 jo direct jobs and tens of thousands of more indirect jobs, as well as positively impacting the economy in the North Rift region. This is a billion of shillings for your investment. So, we have confidence in the government of Kenya, we have confidence in the governor of the county West Pakot, and we have a lot of roho in the West Pakot. So, we have a lot of people who have been able to get the money from the West Pakot. Now let's take a look at what is happening across the world in terms of business. The Bank of China has pledged to reinvest its growing income to support the real economy and drive the emergence of innovation and productive industries. Now the bank's efforts align with the border initiatives of China's financial sector to support the real economy and promote high level opening up. The bank capped off a successful year, announcing that its operating income had surpassed 624 yuan by NCR, reflecting a robust year-on-year -year increase of over 6%. Building on this momentum, the BOC solidified its commitment to China's technological landscape by providing nearly 1.5 trillion yuan in credit lines to approximately 68,000 tech enterprises. The bank has also expanded its global service network to cover 64 countries and regions outside of the Chinese mainland and maintained its leading position in cross-border RMB, clearing and settlement volumes. Meanwhile, Huntran coffee entrepreneurs like Michael Baradat are improving their bean processing capabilities by investing in new machinery in order to take advantage of China's booming caffeine culture. Coffee consumption in China has been rising steadily in recent years with specialty cars becoming a common place in large cities and even countryside gateways. According to the International Coffee Organization, Chinese residents drank 15% more coffee from the 2022-2023 harvest compared to the previous season. This has created a vast new market for South American growers, particularly from the mild climate and rich volcanic soils of Honduras. Finally, Popular beef ball chain Sukiya in Japan introduced late night fields and raised prices on food items starting from Wednesday over rising labor and raw materials cost. Its operator Zensho Holdings announced that nearly 2,000 eateries, which are open 24 hours, started a charge on addition 7% to the bills of late night customers coming between 22 hours to 5 hours in the morning. This is the first time such late night fees have been implemented in fast food restaurants serving beef balls within Japan. This year, due to a decrease in beef production in the southern United States, triggered by a shortage of cattle feed, coupled with recent yen weaknesses, the import price of American beef used in Japanese beef balls has reached its highest level since 1991, up 38% compared to the same period last year. Edna Murungi for Lunchtime News.
Finally, let's get sporty and we start here in the country where the FKF Premier League and NSL licensing workshop ended last evening in Nairobi as the FKF WPL and NSL workshop begins in the capital. Now, the works workshop are being conducted under the guidance of the CAF instructor Emmanuel Dasoberi, CAF officer Hamza Sururi and a calf expert that is Miguel Rivera. Its primary to focus is the calf clubbing licensing online platform CLOP featuring comprehensive uh, training sessions for club representatives. They received a detailed preparation, presentation rather, on the CAF club licensing regulatory framework of 2022 edition, including explanation of a mandatory criteria for domestic and continental competition at the licensing workshop. What I've learned today will give me a plus so that I can also upgrade my, my, my papers starting from sporting criteria, uh, marketing part of it, uh, uh, infra infrastructure and uh, it will also enhance uh, the entire football fraternity or, or teams uh, to make sure that uh, they, they comply or move from where they are to another level. There are issues that, uh, questions which are arising from uh, the, 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 the members, the executives, club officials around data protection, about availability of the system, uh, can it be hacked, what are the rights, you know, all those technical terms were being taken care of, but also to understand the bigger picture of why club licensing and the basis behind it and what they need to, to meet. And what is the future also, because this is a progressive. Now, internationally, some good news for the Gunners, where Arsenal moved back to the top of the English Premier League table after beating Luton Town 2-0 at the Emirates Stadium last night. In another match, Phil Foden hat-trick propelled Manchester City to a 4-1 win over Aston Villa at the Etihad Stadium. Arsenal now tops the Premier League on 68 points, one ahead second place to Liverpool. Arsenal missed the services of leading scorer Bukayo Saka, who suffered a knock in the 44th minute while trying to stop Prince Nelson after Smith Rowe was afforded too much space in the penalty oh, area. The pass, and it's in! 2-0 to Arsenal! Arsenal and Liverpool with a commanding 4-1 win over Aston Villa at Etihad Stadium. Manager Pep Guardiola left key men Alin Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne on the... Well, I might say it's feeling good to be back on top, but that can be short-lived given that Liverpool is expected to face and entertain Sheffield United at Anfield Stadium. And of course, the big match of the day will be Chelsea against Manchester United. You can tune in for those particular matches later this evening. My name is Abdiaziz Ashim. My co-anchor is Brian Muraru. Do join us in our subsequent bulletins at 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. For now, good afternoon and enjoy the rest of your viewing. Watch the Mozakbet Cup as teams from both the top tier and low tier battle for the ultimate prize of representing the country in Africa's CAF Confederations Cup.